What's going on, everybody's? My name is Chris Williams, and this is this week's Overblood Community Video Thingy, a show where I take the past week's news and everything Game Informer and put it all together in one video and give it to you, the amazing people out there in the tubes of the internet. Now, I'm not just talking about the magazine. Come on, folks. It's 2015. I'm talking about, oh, maybe GameInformer.com, maybe Game Informer's YouTube page, all right? And let's not forget about the amazing people at the Game Informer Facebook page, better known as the Overblood Community. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing these videos and you're wondering, Chris, how can I participate? Every Monday, except for this past Monday, very sorry about that, at 7 p.m. Central Time, I post the topic of the week in the Overblood Facebook page. You respond, we talk, it goes in the video, that post in the following Friday at the same time goes live. Hashtag the future. Now before we get into what Game Informer's been doing this past week, let's talk about a couple over buddies. Austin Allen, he did a contest where someone won any console that isn't called a PS4, Xbox One, or a Wii U. I mean, listen, what Austin Allen is doing is fantastic, but my man is not made out of money, alright? Now, I searched and searched, I couldn't figure out who won. But uh, congrats to whomever won. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and obviously, if you know who won, let me know. I'll put their names in a box somewhere around here, you know, and be like, hey, congratulations, someone with a name that's really hard to spell. You know, and though you, there you go. Pretty cool, right? Now, uh, also, this week in Overbody News, uh, this little guy named Ian Levesque. Le Levesque. Levesque. I don't... What's up with these names, guys? They're all weird. Are you guys all from Europe? Like, what's what's up? Um, Ian Levesque, who is... Uh, he's hosting an event to screen the first episode of Season 3 of Replay, which happens Saturday, tomorrow. Uh, the link, as always, is down below. And, of course, if you're seeing this on a Monday or a Sunday or whatever day, um, don't worry because I've got the links to everything that's going on and uh, you won't miss anything. So it's super cool, right? Now, the topic of the week, obviously, is what we always do last. So before we get into that, let's get into what keeps the lights on, Game Informer. Starting off is everyone's favorite, Kimberly Wallace. Kim wrote a review for the PC and soon-to-be PS4 game Life is Strange. I actually think that game comes out today, Friday, so uh, maybe go check the PS Store and see what it says. Hopefully it's there. Uh, usually, I would just link you guys to a test chamber, but currently there isn't one. But definitely check out her review. It's a great write-up. And from the sounds of things, this game is going to be yet another fun episodic that I'll get to play on my PS4. Because, you know, I don't get to play PC games because I'm sad. Uh, and, of course, we had the Game Informer podcast hosted by Matt Helgeson, where he and the crew talked about Grim Fandango and the happenings going on at MAGFest. MAGFest. I didn't realize that that game was popular enough to have its own convention. Hashtag mag jokes. <laughs> now, obviously, well, I've got a question for you. Who here loves test chambers? You get a test chamber, you get a test chamber, and you get a test chamber. Everybody gets a test chamber because this week, folks, we've got four test chambers posted. We've got Riptide, GP2, which looks like a, a, some sort of a racing game on water. Looks super cool. We got Stranded Deep. You're on an island. You're Tom Hanks, and you're looking for Wilson. Amazing. Also, don't forget Grim Fandango and maybe the most surprising game in a while, Dying Light. Every time I see something about that game, it looks awesome. And Game Informer, they definitely keep the hype up with their test chamber. Go watch it. Obviously, links down below. Pretending to be Oprah there, handing out test chambers. Got me really pumped. Now, they also put up a replay of Wario World and another super replay episode of I almost said Dying Lights, Raw Danger. And which is awesome, right? Have you guys been checking that out? They're wearing Santa outfits. They're, I don't know, there's, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start watching. You guys have been posting like some awesome stuff. I see some images pop up on the Facebook page all the time. I gotta start watching. I'm gonna catch up. I'm probably gonna wait till they finish the whole thing now and just do like a marathon of it. And uh, it looks awesome. It looks very funny. So go check it out. Now, um, guess what? We're still not done yet. Uh, the fine folks at Game Informer, they put in some work this week, as opposed to last week when they just sat on their butts not doing anything. I'm kidding. I love you guys. Don't be mad at me. Maybe maybe leave a comment this week and say how great of a job I'm doing. I don't know. Just saying. It's an idea. Um, <laughs> we also had a live stream of Majora's Mask. I'll link you guys to the video on YouTube, but you should also check out their Twitch page so you can play, uh, so you can stay up to date, rather on all their streams that they put out. Uh, now that they've got, I think his name's Wade Wojcik. I'm really sorry if I said your name wrong. 
Uh, they've got him, though. I feel like uh, they're definitely putting out some more stuff. They've got Ben Hansen out in the field. He's doing all these awesome Uncharted 4 videos and all this other stuff. But I, they've got Wade now, and he's, uh, he's at the studio. He's at the office. He's working on some new stuff. I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. So definitely stay in tune for what Game Informer is going to be doing online. It's very exciting stuff. Now, for the topic of the week. Now, this week, I asked the Overblood Facebook group what their thoughts were on HD remakes and reboots. Not just in games, but all genres of entertainment. Since I posted last week's video, the internet has given us a new Fantastic Four trailer, the cast to the new Ghostbusters remake, and what has now become very bittersweet news for me, Indigo Prophecy having some sort of re-release, maybe it's an HD up higher res director's cut thing, I don't know. Why is it bittersweet, you ask? Well, <laughs> Indigo Prophecy, randomly, is my favorite game of all time, and I had thought it was getting uh, put out on PS4, and that's not, uh, not what happened. That's not what's going to happen. Nope. I uh, got apparently a PC and soon Android only. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Quantic Dream. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Only my favorite game, and I just want to be able to play it again. <laughs> so uh, what would you guys think on, uh, on HD Remakes? Now, Simeon Moore says he loves HD remakes. It gives people who missed out on games when they were first released a chance to play or to see their favorite games in glorious HD. He then went on to brag about how Persona 4 Golden's amazing. Uh, thanks for unknowingly rubbing it in, Simeon, Simeon, whatever your name is. He also said that movie reboots can go either way, though. Uh, Jason Payne agrees and... You know, he added that he thought that uh, The Wind Waker is the best example. He says it shows how a bunch of small changes can immensely change the overall experience. It really made the game smoother and accessible for everyone to enjoy. Now, Morgan Land showed up, though. He, he had some opinions. Uh, I'm not sure about this guy. I'm just kidding. I love you. Thank you for commenting. Uh, he said he's not a big fan specifically with HD Wind Waker. He went on to write more stuff about the difference between a reboot and a remake and what all that means. And personally, I just sort of think he only looked at the picture I posted and didn't read the well-crafted paragraph describing the topic of the week. Um, sorry, buddy. But um, actually, you know, I'll link I'll link the whole thread down below. You guys can read what he wrote and what everybody wrote because uh, some a lot of people, everybody, all of you, not just some, uh, you all wrote amazing things this week, and I uh, want everybody to be able to read them. So links down below for that. Now, David Lewis says he's cool with remakes as long as they make sense. One example he used was Saints Row 4. He says it was pretty pointless. Uh, when it comes to reboots, he says it really just depends if it's necessary. The two that come to mind for him are Tomb Raider and Prince of Persia, and he loved both. Now, Travis Wayne says he's cool with both games and movies. He says even if they end up sucking, you always have the original content to go back to. Reboots don't hurt anything despite what fanboys say. Uh, Hillary Witten Wilton? Is that a, Hillary Wilton? Hillary, I like Witten better. Maybe Hillary, maybe change your name, Hillary. Hillary Wilton, a.k.a. William Shatner, says she's was never the type of person who needs updated graphics in a game or movie in order to enjoy it. Hashtag hipster, am I right? Um, she goes back to old movies and games all the time and you can enjoy them in their original format. She does say that if a reboot or remake was good then that's great. She can enjoy those too. But uh, wouldn't be heartbreaking if uh, heartbroken if remakes and reboots just didn't happen. Uh, James Johnson, I like some of these names. Now, I've flubbed several names today because I'm drunk. But James Johnson, now that's, that's a good American name. I want more good American names like that in the Overblood community video thingy every week. Now, James Johnson says as long as it seems like they put time and effort into a remake, then he's all for them. He also hopes for an HD dot hack game. Uh, Dustin Dent agrees with James. Uh, they just don't want. Uh, they both just don't want companies to try and put out a quick cash in. Basically, uh, Dustin is also a member of Team Cool Guys because he wants a Bushido Blade remake, and that game is awesome. Now, Cassie Hassie Maley Mally, I don't know how to say your last name. Says she's okay with them. Uh, feels we get enough new games that it doesn't really feel like an oversaturation. And I agree. I, I, I hear people all the time, like on IGN editors, even Game Informer guys on their podcasts. Um, they always mention things like how oh, we're, we're oversaturated with, uh, I don't know if they say oversaturated, but they say there's too many HD remakes. They're always coming out. I disagree. I really don't feel like there's that many coming out. And especially when it's a game you like, I think you're awesome. I think you think it's great. Um, now, when it's a game you don't care about, obviously you're like, oh, why are they putting this out. But there are hundreds of thousands of people who are excited for games like uh, like Sleeping Dogs. 
Sleeping Dogs got an HD release. No one talks about it, but I guarantee there are people out there who love that game and are playing it right now on their PS4s. So it just, you know, just relax. If you're complaining about HD remakes, you think there's too many of them, just simmer down now. Now, um, Jacoby Brannigan, who delivers the awesome sauce each and every week on the Overblood video community video thingy, whatever it's called, um, drunk, uh, he says he likes HD remakes. He owns a fair many of them. He does think it's a bit weird that there are games like Borderlands 2 and The Last of Us that get remade since they just came out. He did go on to say Rockstar at least put in entirely new gameplay systems in their GTA 5 remake. Uh, he then demanded Capcom give him an HD Dragon Dogma game. And um, then he had a breakdown. He, I mean, I think he literally, his mind snapped. And he wrote a fantastic piece on Dragon's Dogma. No one asked him to do this, but he did it. And you should go read it because it's awesome. You're the man, Jacoby, and be excited for that Dragon Dogma online. I mean, that's they're delivering what you want, okay? It's just not it's not Dragon Dogma 1, but you're going to get to play Dragon Dogma with hundreds of people. Sorry. <laughs> now, now, to finish this one on a, on a positive note, Eric Hamel, Helmul, Helmul, I don't how do you say that? Like, the, oh my gosh. I could never be like a principal at a, at a high school where I have to like announce people for graduation. Now coming to the podium, Eric Howmull. Oh my gosh. Says he's generally, he generally dislikes reboots. Uh, it tends to cheapen the source material by claiming that it needs to be rebooted. Some are okay, uh, like the new DMC, while others are unneeded and bad or mediocre. I think he, he listed like, you know, the new Sonic Boom and stuff like that. I don't really know if that's like a reboot or a remake. Um, I sort of looked at that as just like another another sad moment in Sonic history. But uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a reboot, I guess. I guess technically because all the characters change, but I don't know. Whatever. Um, he then said that he likes HD re-releases if the games honestly haven't been on recent consoles. You know, like Indigo Prophecy. Just say Quantic Dream, K David Cage. I'm like one of your only fans left in the world, big dog. Where's my game? <sighs> um... He also mentioned Devil May Cry and, and Jack and Daxter uh, for those kind of things as well. Um, now, overall, everyone seems to be in agreement, for the most part, that remakes and reboots aren't a terrible thing, as long as the companies doing it appreciates the source material. Well, this has been yet another episode of the Overblood Community Video thing. And as always, if you missed the topic of the week, Feel free to leave your opinion either on YouTube or in the Facebook group, letting me and the community know what you think. And before I go, I want to I get serious here a little bit, guys. Uh, before I go, never forget, Overblood, when bad times come and you're scared and, and worried nothing good is around the corner, just remember, Batman Jaden Smith will be there to protect you. Later, guys.